Okay, so hey everybody, this is Mr. Bells again. Um, this video is for Pre-Calc A, uh, Chapter 1, Section 1-3. It's about the 12 basic functions. This one's going to be a little bit different video. I'm going to do some of the stuff that's written, but I really want to point out something that's, uh, you can find it in your textbook uh, at the very back cover of it, or inside uh, Section 1-3. So if you need to go um, uh, to the online book, you can go so this is 12 basic functions. So we're going to look at in detail all of these functions right here. And uh, again, this is in the back cover of your textbook. So I'm just going to kind of go through them and talk about them and make sure that you are totally comfortable with them. Uh, so um, there we go, nice and blown up. So each one of these functions that I'm going to talk about uh, as we go through here. Um, We'll talk about all those things that we did in section 1-2, increasing, decreasing, uh, absolutes, uh, extremas, uh, bounded, unbounded, those types of things. So uh, the first one's the identity function, uh, f of x equals x. Uh, so basically 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, 4 comma 4, all of those points are on there, including negative 17.5 billion comma negative 17.5 billion. So y and x are basically the same. Uh, domain, of course, uh, is all real numbers negative infinity to infinity. Range is all real numbers too. And you can see that this has uh, rotational symmetry about the origin. So that means that this is an odd function. So those are some of the things that we're going to talk about as we go. So we'll go next. Uh, this one's called the squaring function. And again, you can put all of these things down in your notes. Uh, squaring function takes any x value and it squares it. And that, of course, gets us this nice little parabola here. Uh, domain, negative infinity to infinity, that means all values of x that we plug into it has a corresponding y value someplace up here on the things. But range goes from 0 to infinity, so you can see there are no y values down here. We can't get negatives out of this uh, output because whenever we square a number, um, it gives us a positive. Now, of course, that's not true if we had imaginary numbers, but these are all based on real number inputs. Okay, number three, cubing function. I'm going to go pretty quick on these ones. So a cubing function looks like this, and basically takes any x value and it raises it to the third power. Uh, <coughs> this one is an odd function. Also, it has rotational symmetry about the origin. It has no maximums or minimums. They go uh, maximum all the way up, minimum all the way down. This, of course, does have a absolute minimum, and that value is zero. Uh, y equals a... a <coughs> ABS X or symbol wise like this uh, absolute value of X um, this one you can see is uh, continuous but it does have uh, a little um, bend point right there so it doesn't flow perfectly um, it's changed from increasing to decreasing is very sharp its domain is from negative infinity to infinity its range is from zero to infinity it is bounded below uh, all of those types of things this next one right here is the reciprocal function, uh, also known as an inverse function. Anytime that you have division by a variable, like 1 over x, you're going to get something that looks like this. Now, if 1 happened to be negative, uh, then the graphs would be in the second quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. But because 1 is positive, it ends up in the first and the third. You know that this has two asymptotes, both a vertical asymptote at uh, x equals 0 and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Uh, that it does not have an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum, um, but it is discontinuous at uh, x equals 0. Good deal. Square root function. Uh, that looks just like this. Uh, radical over the x. Uh, it could be, um, we're always using square root for our 12 basic functions, but it be, could, could be cube roots, fourth root, stuff like that. If we were looking at any radical function. Uh, but a square root of function uh, for these 12 basic functions starts right here and goes up here. You know it can't be any place over the negatives because if x was negative, then you'd have the square root of a negative, and then we don't get any real numbers. Uh, this one does not have an asymptote that goes down, unlike this one down here, which does have an asymptote that goes all the way down. This one actually starts at 0, 0. Its domain and range are the same, 0 to infinity, 0 to infinity, uh, and like, okay. So we'll come over to here, and this one is uh, exponential growth. <coughs> we don't put exponential in the k in here, we just call them uh, 
uh, exponential growth functions. Uh, we're going to use e to the x uh, rather than a certain power of 2 or 3 or 4, or whatever it is, uh, to an x power. We know that the domain is all real numbers. However, the range is only 0 to infinity. Now, of course, we can have adaptations of this. We could put plus 7 and shift it up or do other things to it. But this is our basic, um, or what we'll consider the parent function. Okay, It is continuous across all x's. Uh, and uh, it doesn't have any uh, anything below y equals zero. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about this one in great detail in this chapter later on, basic logistic function. Uh, logistic models are really exponential models that kind of taper off and die off. Okay. They, uh, they start growing exponentially and then like, whoa, it can't really happen. <coughs> we'll talk about these again in detail. Uh, basically, most exponential uh, growth functions are really logistic models, like, for instance, uh, cell phone ownership in the planet. Yes, they went off exponentially, but there's only so many people on the planet, so that's going to taper off. Okay, um, Even though, and this is a pretty good time because we'll talk about a lot of virus spread, uh, exponential growth looks like corona is going to go off. But there's only so many people on the planet that can get it. And yeah, we might still be on this uptake right here. But there's a limit uh, to what there can be. So all basic logistic functions have limits to growth. This is what the equation looks like. 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x. Uh, its domain is all real numbers. But its range uh, will go from 0 to 1. Now, when we do example problems, that number 1 will change. That will be the limit to growth, whatever that is. And these numbers under here will change. But this is the basic function. Uh, it's got the, uh, the smallest ranges that we have. OK, so uh, natural logarithmic function, uh, f of x equals natural log of x. You know that it is partnered up with this one right here. So exponential growth functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other. So if I drew the line y equals x right in there, or basically an identity function from up above, uh, those two things would be mirror images over each other. Okay, uh, there's uh, when we do notes in class, it talks about an interesting fact uh, for this logarithmic function that if this was one inch uh, in or no one foot in height uh, going vertically, uh, that we would have to go over a mile to the right before this thing became one foot high in terms of growth. So its growth is so super, uh, it looks kind of fast here, but so super slow as we continue going on and on and on to the right. Okay. Uh, down here, this is called the int function, greatest integer function. And uh, its domain is all real numbers. You can see that even when the x's have little holes there, it jumps right up into here. So it has jump uh, <coughs> discontinuity. So even though it uh, does have all values of x's, uh, it, it does have some gaps in between it. So it's not a smooth transition from one uh, to the other. Uh, what exactly does this mean? That means that any, it's kind of like a rounding function. So like if I had uh, uh, x being uh, 1.5, it would take you up there and it would say that the um, value of that would be 1. Uh, 1.9 would be uh, 1 um, until we get to 2 and then 2 instead of being 1 jumps up to that next uh, integer so kind of like a truncating thing it just takes whatever the decimal place is and cuts it off uh, range is just integers that's I mean that's a pretty small one in terms of total uh, things because there are no values right there's no gaps in between so like if I said hey 1.75 um, is the output you'd be like nope uh, the output can only be integers, okay? And then these two, uh, we've talked about these a lot. You guys took a trig class. You probably didn't do as much graphing as we're going to end up doing in here um, with some of the stuff, and we're going to do a few more crazy stuff with some graphs as we go. Sorry, let me focus that in a little bit. Um, so this is the sine function. The sine function is um, rotationally symmetric about the origin, rotationally symmetric about the origin. Now, it does have a vertical line of symmetry. In fact, infinite vertical lines of symmetry. Like if I put a line right through here, uh, you can see that I could flip it over directly on top of itself. Um, but that's not uh, 
It's not an even function because that vertical line of symmetry isn't at x equals 0. Its domain is all reals, and its range goes from negative 1 to 1. Now, of course, we can alter and tweak the sine function, which we will do a lot of, especially once we get to pre-calc b um, from there. Okay? Cosine function and sine function are identical. They simply have been shifted. If I take this uh, sine function and push it back 90 degrees, you'll see that I get the cosine function. Or if I take the cosine function and I shift it forward 90 degrees, I'll get the sine function. Um, domains and ranges are the same. Uh, however, you can see cosine function is now an even function. It is bounded. It is continuous. Uh, and it has an infinite number of relative maximums and minimums or local maximums and minimums. Okay? So those are all of our 12 basic functions. And then uh, the question is, um, if I ask you some general things about them, can you verify the answer? that for me, okay? So like one of my questions might be something like this. Um, so tell me, list all of those 12 and hopefully you have them down. Uh, tell me all those 12 uh, basic functions that um, have vertical asymptotes. So you should be able to look at that thing and go, oh yeah, vertical asymptotes, okay? So why don't you try it for a second, pause the video, go. Uh, count up all the ones that have vertical asymptotes. Good deal. So, now you're back. And here's our uh, wonderful page full of stuff. And I'm going to talk about ones that have vertical asymptotes. So this would be a no, this would be a no, this would be a no, this would be a no. This is a yes. This one does have a vertical asymptote. So one, a uh, no, a no, a no, a yes. A uh, log function does have vertical asymptote. No, no, and no. Okay, um, how about all the functions that have uh, um, uh, ooh, ooh, sorry about that. Uh, all the functions that are increasing from negative infinity to infinity. Increasing from negative infinity to infinity. So when I talk about that, I'm talking about the x's. So as I go from left to right, is it increasing across its entire thing? So this would be a yes. This would be a no because this entire branch is decreasing. Uh, this would be a yes, increasing. This would be a no. This would be a no. Uh, this one's decreasing. In fact, it's decreasing at every place uh, except for uh, x equals 0, which is, uh, again, uh, removable discontinuity. Uh, this would be um, uh, non-existent over here, so it's increasing across its entire domain of its function, but not uh, from negative infinity to infinity because it's a DNE right over here. Uh, this one right over here, uh, that'd be yes. This one right over here, that'd be yes. Even though it's flatlining and it's not going to get higher than a certain amount, it's, it's still going to increase, even though that increase is going to be so tiny. Uh, this would be a yes. Uh, this one down here, uh, technically, even though the function as a whole gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes, it's not doing it consistently because this flat lines, it stops. So it's not increasing over each of these individual ranges, even though it is from gap to gap to gap. So that would be a no. Uh, this is definitely a no. It increases and decreases and increases and decreases and did over here. Okay? So it's going to be a lot of those types of questions um, that you're going to be able to pull those things out from. It's more like getting to know these things. And then over the course of this class and some of these other videos, we're going to go into more detail about some of these ones. Um, this is just to get you to know the basics. Okay. 12 basic functions. So um, hope you guys uh, uh, got something out of this video and you took some good notes on it. Make sure you know all 12 of those things, know everything about them, be able to uh, go between equation and graph and names, okay? Uh, so if I give you the name, you can give me the equation and the graph. If I give you a graph, you can give me the equation and the name. And if I give you the equation, you can give me the name and the graph. That's kind of how these ones are going to work for at least part of it. Good deal. We'll talk to you later. Bye.